everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about Citadel's new shades. Now I got to clean up a mess. All right, let's get into it. The the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique and learn it Vinci V. Now it's no secret around here if you've been a fan of this channel for a long time that I'm not a big fan of GW's paints, that is to say the regular Citadel paint line. That being said, Citadel's shades have long been a very useful product. Uh, they're something that I regularly use in my painting routine, even if it's only for things like bases or fur or highly textured surfaces that you can't really establish normal volumes on. So when Citadel invited us over and said that they were going to have us experiment with their brand new reformulation of the entire shade line, I must admit I had some trepidation. These products are time-tested. We all love them. We all use them. They were probably the first miniature we ever painted that we thought looked even decent, probably involved shades of some kind, as we magically applied them or the older versions of them, and then all of a sudden there was depth, and we were like, oh my gosh, I can paint! So, today we're going to sit down and take a look at these new Citadel shades reformulated, with contrast medium effectively to see how they hold up. So can we, you know, how do we use them? Can we use them to paint whole miniatures maybe? Uh, what's the comparative difference between them and the original? And the most important question, the one we're gonna save for last, how do they look over metallics? Oh goodness, goodness. Let's get over to the painting desk. We've got a lot of experimentation to do. So to begin with here, we're going to use some Plague Bearers, and this guy's actually primed in Corax White, the new primer. Um, this isn't a review of that, but as white primer goes out of a rattle can, it's actually pretty nice. So I like it. Uh, and we're going to start with, um, this first part is going to be all about all the new shade colors. So uh, we're going to basically apply them in different ways, but on these white Plague Bearers or this one Plague Bearer, see if we can get a reasonable looking Plague Bearer using just the shades. And I also want to talk just a little bit about how to apply these. This is something I think not enough people talk about. Oftentimes when I see people apply shades, they just sort of slap them on and really just leave it around. Notice how when I apply it, I constantly am moving my brush, sweeping it up and down and around, moving the brush. I'm using a big brush with a big belly and I'm moving it around a lot. And this is really the key to using both the existing shades, but also these new ones, especially these new ones. These new shades have been reformulated with contrast medium. As such, they want to flow into the recesses. They want to flow together. As they dry, it draws together, draws off of the flat surfaces, which makes sense for this the shade line. Contrast and shades really are basically the same product now. It's just about the intensity of the actual tone. And so I'm always sweeping the brush, moving it in a circular motion and making sure that it's all the potential pools of paint are spread all around the miniature. Now, as I move into this color here, you'll notice this is way more intense. So some of the new shade line is a much more saturated color than some of the others. Now, this was always the case, but here it's really pronounced, especially with these new tones this Poxwalker flesh being, I think, the most intense out of the whole lot. Um, as we continue to just layer on these colors, what I do like is how well they sort of work well together. There's never any issue of reactivation or anything like that. As I'm applying uh, our, you know, red burgundy color here, again, it's rather intense. It goes over the other colors, no problem and really doesn't give me any issue. For doing things like these buboes and welts, it's really very easy because the way it's, it, as you can see, it draws around the space. Finally, I wanted to get some more yellow in there. So this croak green, I think is actually better than the poxwalker green for things like poxwalker and uh, Nurgle flesh. Um, this is probably a better base tone for it. But this one I really like, it has a wonderful yellow green tone. It's not too intense and it retreats to the shadows nicely. And these shades, as long as you're moving your brush, keeping it flowing and running around, you will get a lot of different variation in value from running them over top of each other. Now the blue and the gray, I didn't really have a place. So I guess this guy has a blue sword, blue fingernails and blue horns. Um, this blue shade is really interesting because it's really intense. I actually don't think it would shade much of any blue, maybe a very bright blue color. 
And the gray one here, I put it on the base. It seems fine if you're just looking for a soft, subtle shade to a near pure white. Uh, that's basically as near as I can tell the use for it. Here's our finished Plague Bearer. Now, he's certainly not winning any painting competitions, but not bad for shades only in about, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes of work. Uh, certainly something if you've got to paint a whole bunch of these guys, I think it has a nice effect. So just throwing a lot of the shades together, layering them over top of each other, and you can get some good looking minis. So I know it wouldn't be normal that you would paint an entire miniature using just shades, but I thought it was important to show this here because some of these new shades do have, uh, just as with the old line, uh, very different levels of sort of impact, saturation, and intensity. And I thought it would be good to show that off. As well, I think this is a perfectly reasonable looking plague bearer. Like you could put this guy on the table and I think feel pretty good about it. So I do think that these open up a good range uh, of possibilities because the, the colors are now wider and we have access to more shades. Uh, that are in slightly different tones. I do think it expands those who really want to get to painting fast and use that new Corax white and just work your way down. But of course, there's still more to do. So for my next test, I wanted to go ahead and put these over both different primes, one pure white, one zenithal. I'm using Reichland Flesh Aid because it's traditionally been one that I think uh, you can put sort of a layer or two over, uh, just kind of a bright white or ivory color and get a good interesting looking result that kind of looks like skin. And the first thing I noticed immediately here when doing this was that the Zenithal really does wildly impact how this color acts. And that's because as it's drying here, and you notice I'm still doing my best as I move the brush around to sweep over it, constantly be moving, pick up the excess, so on and so forth. But as it dries, as you'll see here, um, because it pulls away from the recesses so much, on the white, you get basically a filter over the highlights, but very little coffee staining or bad effects. It mostly goes down into the recesses. On the Zenithal one, where I didn't have as much of a bright color, it really, in fact, ends up being, you know, barely moving the color of the tones at all. So if you are going to use these with a Zenithal, especially as a primary color, you want to make sure you do a pretty heavy Zenithal, leaning a lot more into the very light grays and whites, so that way the filter will work. Final test here is going to be around the metallics, and this is a big one for me. Citadel shades have long been something I never advocated putting over metallics. A lot of people wash their metals. To me, it is a fast road to making your metals look bad, or at least making them look dingy. Now, if you're going for something like Nurgle and you want dingy, rusty, crusty old metals, then by all means, they were fine. However, a lot of us were just trying to get a good, clean metal that still had some amount of, you know, depth to it and recess shading. And the problem was it would leave a lot of, even if you cleaned it and so you didn't really get coffee stains, it would still leave a filter, a sort of scummy layer over the metals. So this is going to be the real test. Putting these over a high gloss metal surface, do we get a cleaner application and does the color retreat more to the shadows? Let's find out. So for our metallic test, of course, we're going to use some Primera Space Marines and we're going to use the Holy Trinity, Nolan Oil, Agrax, and Seraphim Sepia. Basically, the left side of all these Marines is going to be done in the new contrast shade over the metallic. And the right side is going to be done over the traditional, uh, with, with the traditional uh, shades, the existing ones that are on the market as of, you know, basically right now. The uh, important thing to note here is that these are all airbrush uh, painted with Vallejo metal color steel and then Vallejo metal color silver from above. So as per sort of my standard zenithaling and uh, these are high, high gloss metallics. So the shade sweeps over them very easily. And as you can see here, I really think you get uh, a nicer result from the uh, left side than you do from the right side. But in the end, I'll let you be the judge of that. Uh, I will say that overall, I was quite impressed with how these things, how the Nuln Oil uh, came out, especially just producing some very soft black lines, but nothing that was too bad, no coffee staining, no anything like that. 
As we move to Agrax, uh, obviously here now we start incorporating some brown tones, so we're going to be making these metals look older. And the uh, color shift, if it's left in the highlights, will become much more readily apparent. So once again, we are very much keeping that brush moving. And once again, left side is old and right side is new. Uh, I will say the feel of these two, even as you apply them, is different. You actually notice it a lot when you're going in between the two. Uh, the contrast medium one just feels a bit different in how it smooths around the miniature uh, than the traditional uh, you know, acrylic thinner one. Um, probably just because of the chemical mix. It's, it's hard to really explain, but there is a tangible difference there. Uh, once again, I think that this really does show it pretty well uh, when you look at the left side versus the right side. Uh, there is a lot more shine, I think, that is still coming through. A little bit less of that patina um, that's left on the large flat areas uh, and over the metallics with uh, the new style shades. Finally, Seraphim Sepia, which should have the biggest effect um, because this is just more or less pure brown. So uh, if we're giving it a light uh, you know, wash of this, one would expect that it will still tint a lot of things brown and how much it pulls away from the recesses will be very, very, very obvious. Uh, and right away there, you can really see the application of the traditional old Seraphim Sepia, how much more yellow it makes the metal look almost immediately, even as I start moving the brush around. Uh, and I think you'll see this through into the, the final picture. The, I think with these kinds, with this color is where I notice the biggest difference. So there's our final shot. And I think, as I said, this is where you can really see it. When we look at the left side of the new Seraphim Sepia, a lot more of it is pulled away and you don't really see that yellow patina in the highlight near as much. Whereas with the old school Seraphim Sepia, you can really see how it's left that film throughout. There we are. So all in all, I have to say I like the new shade range. It is an evolution over the last one. Uh, I wouldn't call it a revolution. They're still basically the same product that do basically the same thing, but they are really good. The metallics especially did particularly impress me. There was more shine visible. It's hard to perhaps see that in the photos, just given the amount of light I need to shine on the miniatures to take their picture. But here in reality, I can say that the half that was done with the new one was noticeably different, more shiny uh, than the half that was done with the old recipe. Either way, I really like the new colors that have been added to the shade line. Uh, so I think those are going to be highly valuable. And I do think overall, they're a very good product. They continue to be everything you loved before, but better. There it is. Give it a like if you liked it. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. If you've got a question about the new contrast range uh, of shades that I didn't answer, drop that down in the questions below. I always answer every question and comment. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do so in lots of great ways. We've got affiliate links down below. As well, you can also check out uh, our Patreon. We have a Patreon focused on review and feedback and taking your next step on your hobby journey. Links for everything down in the description. But as always, I so much appreciate you watching this one, and we'll see you next time.